If you follow a vegan diet, you will simply go extinct. By understanding the origin of plant-based diets, things become eerily clear. The source of many plant-based beliefs, both vegan and vegetarian, is from John Harvey Kellogg. You might be familiar with Kellogg cereal. The other person is Ellen G. White, a founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Both of them strongly believed that masturbation is a sin and literally the root cause of all disease. Cornflakes were actually invented to keep bowels and sexual organs free of congestion. Uh, John Harvey Kellogg actually invented devices to prevent children from masturbating. He had young children circumcised, a procedure that was not common at the time. The origin of circumcision has nothing to do with cleanliness. It was specifically to do with the prevention of masturbation. Uh, this was more common with young boys, but happened with young girls as well. John Harvey Kellogg deemed this as one of the final cures, as well as using carbolic acid to blister and remove sensitivity of the sexual organs. Uh, so basically, uh, this guy was cutting off the genitalia of children, uh, binding the hands of child rape victims, saying they were just as responsible as their rapists, and he burned the flesh of children with acid. John Harvey Kellogg was actually one of these Seventh-day Adventists, just like Ellen G. White. And for those of you that don't know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church started the American Dietetics Association. Unfortunately for Ellen G. White and John Harvey Kellogg, their ideas that masturbation being the root of all evil and disease have been disproven by science. Unfortunately for us... We are still choking down cereal, mutilating genitals, and listening to advice from their dietetic organization. One issue with these plant-based diets is phytoestrogen. The name phytoestrogen comes from the word estrus in Greek, meaning sexual desire. It has been hypothesized that plants use phytoestrogen as part of their natural defense against the overpopulation of herbivore animals by controlling female fertility. But we don't have to look at herbivores. The administration of phytoestrogen causes disruption of both male and female reproductive organs. That study actually used an amount of phytoestrogen equivalent to infants being fed soy formula. This resulted in breast development in toddlers, advanced vaginal opening, essentially speeding up hormonal processes in females. In males, quite the opposite happened. Testosterone is lowered. It can result in undescended testes, lower sperm count, outright infertility. And this is kind of interesting because females can still give birth. They just have some irregularities and issues. Males, on the other hand, might actually become infertile. And this isn't specifically related to people following a vegan or plant-based diet. This can happen just from the phytoestrogen in the foods. There are many other hormonal and metabolic processes as a result of nutrient deficiencies on a plant-based diet that can lead to further fertility issues. And this doesn't just start with the feeding of a newborn baby. One major issue is cholesterol as it is a precursor to all sex hormones. When you remove cholesterol from animal foods in the diet, you are hindering your body's ability to perform so many metabolic functions. Uh, you might say that cholesterol is produced in the liver and that's an adequate amount, but why has every single long-term vegan woman lost their period and their hormone levels were completely destroyed? Raw vana, raw alignment. We see this over and over again. Right after I left Hawaii, I got all of my blood work done and I was just not in a good place. Like obviously I was feeling like shit, so it only made sense that the blood work reflected that. But I was essentially low and deficient in almost everything. My hormones were out of balance, like way out of balance. And I had a high candida infection, like stupid high levels. I remember I did a urine test 
uh, to check my hormone levels. And when I received the results, all of my hormones were out of whack. Actually, they were premenopausal. Uh, like if I was a premenopausal woman. And this was really weird because I felt good physically, but the numbers were wrong and I wasn't getting my period. When these hormones are low, specifically progesterone in women, it's one of the highest risk factors for miscarriaging. Progesterone actually prepares the uterus for pregnancy, uh, causing the uterine lining or endothelium to thicken. It is directly produced by cholesterol in the body. Here is a study showing that vegetarian women have lower levels of estrogen as a result of lower progesterone. Here is another study where 18 women aged 19 to 27 years volunteered to follow vegetarian and non-vegetarian diets. Seven of the nine vegetarian women stopped ovulating. Very safe to say that following a low meat diet compromises fertility drastically. Another study explains that there are statistically significant differences in birth weight between vegan and omnivorous newborns. That is, if you can get pregnant in the first place. It's worth mentioning how difficult it is to reproduce now, even compared to recent years. We are literally cutting women open to take babies out. Is that not a sign things aren't going properly? Don't some people wonder why some women pop babies out like it's nothing and other women literally die giving birth? No longer being able to give birth in a natural way is, to me, one of the most obvious things. We are out of touch with nature in many ways. Do you think our ancestors had surgeons and were in labor for three, four, five days straight? These are all modern issues related to improper skeletal development and hormonal imbalance. I'm sure everyone has a grandmother or grandfather that literally had 5, 10, 15, 20 siblings. We don't really see that now. What we do see is that vegetarian men have drastically reduced fertility, specifically sperm count. This was ironically in Loma Linda, where the Seventh-day Adventist church originated and still occurs to this day. A lot of male fertility issues do get blamed on dietary and environmental factors, and a lot of female issues don't. Miscarriages, inability to get pregnant in females is not treated as harshly. I guess people kind of think that you know, males can take it like it is, but females have to be coddled and you can't hurt their feelings. The issue is, you know, these women are essentially ruining their lives and, and babies' lives because they're not educated on the importance of having animal foods in your diet. There are literally vegan women on YouTube claiming to be pregnancy experts, yet they take years to get pregnant. The cognitive dissonance is unreal. These vegans are literally living in a different dimension, completely out of touch with reality. Not only is it incredibly difficult to even have a child for a lot of these vegans, almost every single vegan mother has an issue breastfeeding from their milk running dry to not having adequate nutrients for the child in the breast milk, especially fats. Our ancestors breastfed babies for years, and we can't even survive now without formula. Unnatural vegan was unable to breastfeed her child, and this girl's breast milk ran dry. Yet grandmothers in indigenous tribes were able to breastfeed, but our young woman can't. There are plenty of examples, even just on YouTube, of young vegan women having early menopause. Here is Lillian Maisie at 26 years old and Sonia Elsie at 21 years old. These vegan girls are so out of touch that they won't even consider it's their diet. You have vegans denying meat cravings during pregnancy, and worst of all, you can literally see the lack of facial development in vegan babies. The easiest thing to notice is the lack of lip and lower face development, especially when compared to a newborn healthy baby. And what happens when the vegan eats meat again? Tim Sheaf's dick exploded overnight. 
the, the first night after I had that salmon, I had a wet dream. I hadn't <laughs> ejaculated in months. You know, just to be honest and open with everyone, that, that's turned something on within my body, which was interesting. Raw alignment ran outside and sat on a tree stump. And guys, my sex drive is unreal. And to me, that is an indicator that my hormones are not all over the place, <laughs> but I actually have some sort of healthy hormone balance. Overall, this behavior is absolutely despicable. I could literally bring up dozens of YouTube vegans that have had miscarriages, fertility issues. If you want to look at studies, you can Google any animal nutrient and pregnancy, vitamin B12, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A, vitamin K2, cholesterol. There are statistics showing things like one female can have omega-3 fatty acid levels in her breast milk that are 20 times that of another. Do you want your mother eating fish during pregnancy or do you want her shitting out flax seeds and saying she's getting enough omega-3s because a bunch of other vegans told her she is? There are even studies showing that low-fat dairy reduces fertility and high-fat dairy increases fertility. But I thought fat was bad for me. That's what I've been told my whole life. If you guys want to read more about studies, I've touched on them in some of my past pregnancy videos. So vegans are literally promoting the extinction of the human race, ruining the lives of babies and children, uh, not to mention uh, deteriorating their future quality of life, ruining their facial structure, and altering sexual traits. This isn't specific to vegans. It's the lack of animal foods in modern diets in general, but it's exacerbated by the vegan diet drastically so much that it becomes painfully obvious. Thank you guys for joining me today. Please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share the video if you can. Guys, I really do enjoy going through all of the comments. So if you can, say hello to Frankie Boy down below. If you guys would like to support me further, just check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can search for pregnancy and find those videos that I mentioned earlier. Uh, recently, I've launched Frankie's Free Range Meat. My goal being to provide you guys with high-quality, nutrient-dense foods at an affordable price. Uh, we just did a video on caviar yesterday. I showed you guys some salmon roe, some fish eggs, and at frankiesfreerangemeat.com, we are making foods like caviar so affordable, you can eat them on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com if you would like to learn more about the mission. We're trying to do a lot of things in the future, such as provide you guys with high-quality raw dairy products, wild game meats, uh, things like that. So the more support we get initially, uh, the sooner those things will happen. Again, thank you guys for joining me today and enjoy the rest of the weekend.